Well, uh, the Ackworth Christian Church means a lot to me, uh, simply because it was a, a big part of my life during the, my teenage years, and of course, you know, those are important. I came to the Ackworth Christian Church because of my very best friend, Donna Jarrett, and, um, you know, I just really fell in love with it. I fell in love with the people. They were warm and friendly and welcoming, and they needed a pianist, and so, I got the job uh, shortly after being baptized, right in that baptistry, of playing the piano. So I learned how to play those great old blood songs, uh, you know, uh, uh, Pentecostal power and all that, while I was a pianist for the church. Of, uh, you know, what I didn't know, um, uh, well, just to go on with what happened with me, I continued with the church until I graduated from high school and went off to college, but after that came back and my husband and I were married in this church. I was baptized in the church and uh, during my first pregnancy, the ladies of the church uh, gave me a shower. It was just one of those old fashioned things when Ackworth in general was sort of a different kind of place. What I didn't realize until coming back for the renovation is that this church had such a rich history. We know that after the destruction of the first church, and uh, this, the church was, first church was uh, built on this property in 1875 and thrived in the Ackworth community until 1899 when it burned down. And uh, this uh, particular church was rebuilt and opened in 1901. And honestly, I didn't think it was functioning. I mean, it was really, really bad shape. We had a, uh, a neighbor that um, said he had stopped by and basically um, uh, the elder, Ed Manning and Rose um, were here and they're basically those two and like a handful other people uh, were still at the church and it was still the lights would turn on and on Sunday and they were still going. And and so um, uh, we said, well, okay, you know, we, we were sort of looking, we had sort of found a church, but we said, well, we'll go there. And, and um, you know, we prayed and felt God wanted us to be here. And so, but I mean, there was leaks coming out of the roof, right in the sanctuary, leaves in the back. Uh, it, it was really bad shape, um, and honestly, we didn't know what to do, you know, and we just started praying. And um, through, you know, you know, the divine providence of God, uh, you know, Mac and, and Betsy and, and Tim and so people just came and said, we want to rebuild this church. I got approached by Kenny Parrott. He lives across the railroad up near yeah. the Baptist church. And he was coming over here to the church. I guess he came to a few meetings. Yep. Yeah. And he approached me at the Ackworth bookstore one day about coming up. And of course, everybody in town knew what, what bad shape it was in. And uh, I actually came over here and met with the church like twice. I think down in the basement, Ben, you were there <clears throat> before I, uh, pitched it to the group and uh, of course it wouldn't the church like Ben said it, it, it looked like it was about to fall in it was in terrible condition so then uh, I talked the group into coming over here and we uh, I think we had about three meetings as far as I was that about right That's about right. and at one of the meetings uh, Tim had been doing some research at City Hall on this building and discovered they owned a house here in town. And uh, so that became a pretty big deal. The house had been sitting empty for a couple of years. This is a parsonage? It's a parsonage house, yes. And, and they had owned it, I think, since 1959. I believe that date's right. But it had been sitting empty for, I don't know, a couple of years, been or longer. Uh, from the local citizens, we raised about $40,000 in addition to the money that was recouped from the sale of the house. Also, in addition to that, we had businesses that donated services and materials to us that amounted to about another five or six thousand uh, dollars. We're A1 Construction. We're out of Dallas, Georgia. And uh, when we first began, yeah, I met Mac and uh, he told me the situation. 
and a good friend of mine, Rob McKinnon, uh, asked me, is there a chance I could go over and look at a leak on a church? And uh, introduced me to Mac, and then I got to talking to him about the leaks. We walked past, I think it was five tubs in here with water in them. And uh, he asked me what I thought about the roof, and I said, well, I'm sure we could temporarily fix it, but it's so high in the air, we'll have to have a lift to get us up that high. So we brought a crane out, and uh, we were able to take off a lot of the rusty panels that had been on it for that many years, and uh, we just patched it in, and it never did leak until we took it off and was able to put the new roof on. But we patched it good enough that it stayed dry in here, and then the board met, and they came back and uh, asked me what I thought our budget would be to work on the church, on the church. But a lot of it uh, changed as we went along because uh, anytime you have remodeling, you usually have a, what we call a money pit because you run into floors that had to be jacked up. We ended up fixing the floors on both sides of the church. I want to say one more thing. The mayor made a statement the other day at his state of the city. He said, I don't remember his exact words, but he said this is one of the most unique projects on a church that's been taken on in the state of Georgia. I don't know about that, but I do know that for a small volunteer group, I think it's uh, one of the biggest ones I know of in the Cobb County area. You know, we only got like six board members, right? So I think it, it, we, we, uh, we're just proud we could do it and be involved in it.